Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see by the title, we are finally doing the long awaited how I take my IG pictures video, okay? Y'all have been asking me for this for years, literally for years. And honestly, it wasn't really that I was holding out. I just wanted to make sure that I had all the information that I wanted to give you guys for this video because over time I've learned different things. I've picked up different techniques and things that really have helped me with my IG picture game low key. So I wanted to be able to give you guys all the information that I can right now. And then of course in some years, if some things change, I will do an updated video, but I wanted this video to have as much information as possible. So just to give you guys an idea, I'm gonna pop up some pictures on the screen of Instagram photos that I've taken myself with either my Canon or my phone and just give you guys an idea of, you know, my game is kind of okay. It's kind of, it's getting better. It's definitely not perfect. It's, it works for me, but these are just some of the pictures that I've taken over the last, I don't know, since the beginning of this year, even last year, I'm not going to go past them because there's no point in going super far back. But those are just some examples of pictures I've taken myself. So before you even decide you want to take an Instagram picture, obviously you need an outfit. So for me personally, what I do, I always have all of my outfits planned out. And I did show you guys a little behind the scenes on my Instagram a couple weeks ago on how I put outfits together. So I do use a website called PicMonkey, and that's what I also use to make the thumbnails for my videos. So basically I make like little photo collages of outfits that I want to wear, or better yet, I pick an item. So a top, a pair of bottoms, jeans, a bag, hell, even an accessory, a hat, something like that. And I build an outfit based off of that item in PicMonkey. So I literally just search the internet look for things that I want to go with the outfit. It's kind of hard to really pinpoint how I put outfits together, which is why I haven't done a video like that because it's very in my head. So it's kind of hard for me to translate that. Literally, I will just think of something. It's really hard for me to share the tips because I just can't think of a way to put it into words. It literally just, I'm like, oh, I want to, I want to do this. I want to style it like this. And it's literally just in my head, but I'm working on it. I really want to do a broken down video on how I actually put my outfits together. Like I, I really want to do it. So just stay tuned y'all. I will get it together eventually. But basically I put all my outfits together in Pig Monkey, and that's how I know what I need to take pictures in. So some of the outfits is promo for like brands. And then the other half of it is just stuff that I want to wear because sometimes as an influencer, you can kind of get lost in content that you have to do like, as in, you'll be just constantly posting things that you have to post and not necessarily things that you want to post, if that makes sense. So I always try to balance it out by just posting, you know, my sponsor content and then of course my own outfits that I, you know, put together out of the clothes that I have in my closet, not just stuff that was sent to me that I have to post on Instagram. So once I decide which outfit in PicMonkey I want to you know, take that day. It depends on the weather, depends on my mood. It depends on how I want to do my hair that day. Because if you guys don't know, I'm very particular about my pictures. So everything down to the hair, okay? Everything down to the hair has to go with the outfit. Some outfits to me personally, just don't go with a bob. Some outfits just don't go with long, curly, wavy hair. It's literally like, I, I just have a weird way of thinking. I'm pretty sure some people feel the same way, but I just feel like certain hairstyles don't go with certain outfits. So if you guys look at my Instagram, each outfit, pretty much, I wear the same hair, but each outfit, I do have my hair differently. So that right there just shows you that I really put a lot of thought into my outfits and my hair. So if you are someone who has trouble putting outfits together, I would definitely recommend you, you know, following people that you either want to dress like or you have a similar style to, or go on Pinterest and look for like outfit inspo. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I personally don't do that. I don't look for outfit inspo. I literally just put things together and sometimes it is very trendy. And I'm not gonna say that I've created all the looks that I've worn because everything has been done, but I don't physically go and like look for inspiration. I literally just find something that I like and I put an outfit together based on whatever it is I'm feeling for that piece. So you can definitely, you know, go off the dome or you can go on Pinterest or Instagram, save photos, 
you know, have a folder in your phone of just like inspo and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's perfect because it allows you to be able to find your style. You can try out different things. And if you don't like it, then you just move on to the next. So the next thing that you have to figure out is location. So location is something that completely depends on you and what you're comfortable with. A lot of people personally are not comfortable taking pictures in public, myself included. So when I do go to public places, I have to make sure it's a place that's not like super populated. So a lot of people now are taking pictures in parking garages. I have gotten onto the wave, although it's a hit or miss for me when it comes to parking garages because it's so damn windy, okay? It is so windy. There's nothing there to stop the wind, at least at the ones that I go to. So my hair is just flying everywhere and then it's, it just ruins the whole vibe. So honestly, I don't really like taking my pictures in parking garages. I love the vibe, but I just need to find the perfect one in my area that isn't super like windy, like it's so annoying. But you can also take pictures in nature. I wish I had that option. I mean, I could, but I don't really live near like nature. I live in the middle of nowhere, basically. It's just field, so there, there's really nothing. And you can also go to like shopping centers because usually they have like different, you know, textures. They have like different styles of concrete bricks like just different looks so you can kind of find something that goes with your outfit but for me personally i just kind of go from the same places i have a garage downstairs so sometimes i like to go in there it's the privacy of my own garage so i can go in there and do whatever i gotta do i do go to parking garages but only if it's not super windy i do sometimes go where else i'll find like a nice fence or a nice gate or something like that to take a picture in front of but for the most part i don't have any crazy like locations i don't actually drive around and look for locations and that's just on me because i just personally am not comfortable yet just taking pictures in like all over the place i'm working up to that but definitely if you are driving around in the car or if you're a passenger in the car just look around your city when you're driving and see like different spots that you can take pictures in. So we are downstairs in the car and I just wanted to show you guys what the inside looks like. So that is where my tripod and everything will be set up over there. And I'll be sitting over here. I considered going in the back seat because there may be a little bit more room for me to pose, but we'll see, we'll try it out. And yeah, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like in here. On the camera, you could see all of the the glares in here and I'm not really feeling the way that looks so I need to move the car out of the Sun uh, I wonder if I just pull up straight will the Sun still be in the car oh my okay so I'm in the back seat and this is a struggle okay the way the tripod is set up is very wonky so i have the tripod sitting on the center console because i tried to put it up there in the front and it just was not sitting properly so as you can see it's not even technically it's just a little makeshift situation we got going on here but there's definitely more room back here so I am trying to figure out how I'm gonna pose because this isn't how I was planning to take the photo originally so now I have to completely reformulate my whole mindset about how I wanted the picture to look because now it's a different angle so yeah so basically with photos in general you just want to move like you want to keep moving I try not to like stick into one pose like if I'm sitting like this I will but typically I just keep moving and typically the ones that are like in between your poses are always the best ones for me personally so I just keep moving literally I just do not stop moving I will get a good amount of shots and it's always the ones in between so I turned up the brightness a little bit because it was very very dark I'm sorry y'all but I am about to switch my lip I feel like there's something in there I'm actually gonna go through So all I do is just kind of look through them and see what we got. I feel like there's definitely something in there. 
Yeah. Because I need to change my lip and get out of here. Because I've been in here for way too long. So yeah, these are cute. These are cute. So we're going to change my lip and then we're going to move on to the red lip photos. Okay, so now that you have your inspiration, you got your outfit together, you found your location, you want to get dressed, obviously, make sure that you are in a decent mood to take the pictures. You do not want to go out and take pictures and you're just kind of like, I mean, I don't really want to do this, but I have to. Like, you don't want to do that because it will translate and your mood is just going to be shot. I, there have been so many times where I'm like, I do not want to take pictures today, but I have to. And then I do. And then I end up having to do it all over again because I literally am just like mugging the whole time. My body language is just off. Like everything is just off. So you definitely want to be in a decent mood. You don't have to be in like the most amazing mood, but don't go if you're angry, you're upset about something, like you're irritated or annoyed because that's really gonna translate, I promise you. I promise. So if you, if you need to, even if you're not in the greatest mood, listen to some music. You know, hype yourself up in the car. If you're with somebody, you know, just kind of have a little bit of fun because sometimes the person taking your pictures can also affect the way your pictures come out. If they don't really feel like doing it, if they're not in the greatest mood, it will translate as well because they're not going to be putting any effort into it. So just make sure if you are with someone, you guys are, you know, in a good mood. You're not upset with the person. Y'all are irritated with each other. You didn't just have a fight right before you got out there, like that kind of thing. Definitely be sure to be in a good mood or as good of a mood as you can be and just tell yourself you're going to crush it. Okay, you're going to get out there, you're going to get this shit done and you're going to look bomb doing it. Okay, you have to like talk to yourself because it really helps. Okay, so now we're going to move on to what I use. So this is determined before I even get to whatever location it is. So if I'm taking pictures indoors, I use a certain set of equipment. And if I take pictures outdoors, I use a certain set of equipment. I used to use my Canon outdoors, but I noticed it's very humid here. The weather is just crap. Honestly, I hate it, but it has affected my camera a lot. Like the humidity fogs up the lens and just too much more. Like my camera will literally be like wet, like dripping water. And I was like, oh, hell no. Okay, first of all, my camera was very expensive. I literally invested in this camera last year the lens the camera everything the tripod my lighting so i do not play when it comes to my equipment and i was like i'm not about to start taking this outdoors and ruining it and like eroding the inside of my lens and my camera because i want a good picture no so only when i take pictures indoors is when i use my canon so when i'm outdoors i do use my iphone and this is the iphone 12 somebody i'll put it on the screen because honestly i don't know i've had this for a few months now so before i was using this phone i was using this phone which is the iphone 11 and as you can see it is significantly smaller and dirty but it's way smaller than this phone so yeah i personally love my phone like my new phone because the camera is just a1 it's just bomb you don't need to have this phone to get good pictures because like I said, I was using this phone before I had this one and you wouldn't even tell the difference, but I can because obviously the phone is upgraded. It's a better quality when it comes to the camera. So, and it has like the multiple cameras 
and this one just has the one camera. So I do use this now for my pictures, but I used this before. So when I am outdoors, we're gonna stick with the outdoors first and then we're gonna move to the indoors because that's something that I don't do super often. But when I'm outdoors, I use this tripod. So everyone knows in order to take your own pictures outdoors, you need a tripod, okay? This one, I'm not gonna lie, is not the best quality because I've had moments where this literally blew over. Like it's so light that it just blew over with my phone in it and my phone just fell out of it and I was like freaking out. But yeah, this, I'm not gonna say I recommend it. I will try to find one that's a little bit more sturdy down below, but this definitely gets the job done if it's not hella windy outside. So as you can see here, it's an attachment and you just slide it open and you put your phone in there. So the thing about this phone is this case is way too big and chunky. So when I pull this out too far, this literally just pops off. So I have to take my phone out of the case, which is really annoying to fit it in here properly, but whatever. So I know you guys are probably also expecting me to pull out a clicker, but we're not gonna do that because I don't use a clicker. I have not used a clicker in a minute. And I told you guys a while ago that I found this new hack, which a lot of people know about now to take my pictures. And I'm gonna show you guys that now. So as you can see here on the screen, I have my Lens Buddy app. And this is what I've been using to take my pictures. That is it because it's so easy and convenient and you don't have to have a clicker in your hand. You don't need anyone you know they're helping you like this is the goat whoever created this seriously thank you okay so basically you go into the app and then at the bottom it says timer and then it says 60 with the little photos next to it then it has one second and then it has photo so basically when you hit timer you could put instant timer or claps i always keep it on timer because it just goes by quicker for me and then next up you click 60 and this is just how many photos you want it to take at once well not at once but in that allotted time frame for me 60 is a good amount before i kind of get tired of posing but sometimes i do pick 120 because i just want to get as many as possible so yeah you could just pick however many you want it to take and you go there and then next up is the seconds so you can pick how many seconds in between each photo you want. So for this, I always keep it on one. So basically like one second, 60 photos equals a minute. So you take 60 photos in a minute. That makes sense. But if you obviously need more time in between, you could definitely switch it over to two, three, five, 10, 30, one minute, five minutes, which who the hell is doing five minutes? but whatever. So yeah, I do one second because I just wanted to go quickly and that's how I get the best photos because it just goes by quicker. But yeah, I just keep it on one second because it goes by quicker. So then you're going to press the middle and then it starts to count down from 10 and then you can hear it. Can y'all hear that? And you see the flash. So you can see on the screen that it's taking, just it's just constantly taking photos. So yeah, that's literally what I use. So now all I have to take with me is a tripod and my phone. I don't need a clicker. I don't need any extra stuff with me. I don't have to have anything in my hand. Literally, I could just take this and this and I'll be good. So when it comes to taking pictures indoors, I use way more equipment, obviously, because I'm indoors and the lighting usually doesn't work in your favor unless you have a lot of natural lighting in your apartment, which I unfortunately don't, then you have to use a lot of lighting. So I'm going to show you guys the lights that I use. I use a ring light and I use two studio lights on the side. They are, I believe they're newer is the brand. So I use my Canon 80D which is my camera that I purchased last year when I upgraded my camera. I used to have a Canon T6i, but that one wasn't the greatest. I had it for a long time and the quality was just not hidden. So yeah, now I use my Canon 80D and then I use a 18, I believe 18 by 35 millimeter lens from Sigma. And this thing is 
the goats. Okay, I need a new one. I bought two when I bought this one, but this is the one that I use the most. The other one, I believe, is like a wide angle lens, which I never really need to use. So I always use this one. I use this for my videos. I use it for my pictures. So yeah, right along with my lights and my camera, I do use a flash, and this is what gives it the very crisp, professional-like look because without it, you'll definitely get the same effect, but I feel like this makes it like focus in on you more and it gets the details. So this is the flash that I use, and this is from Canon, and it is the 430 EX3RT, and this is a flash, so when you put it on top of your camera, you just fold it like this and then you slide it on top of your camera like that, like you would your mic. And literally it just flashes every time you take a picture and it just makes everything look super just lit, okay? Before I bought this, listen, I was like, something is, something is missing when I would take my pictures. I'm like, it looks okay, but something is not right. Like this literally just balances out everything. I don't even know how, I didn't set this up any kind of way. I literally just use it on what it came on, like the settings, and it's perfect. Like, I don't know, I don't know. But I got this on Amazon, but I also found this on B&H Photo Studio. I think that's what it's called. And I'm gonna get the upgraded version of this because this one is good for a beginner, but I feel like I need to upgrade because I've had this for a minute and it's just, I don't know, I just want the updated version of this, that's just my preference. I just like to upgrade every so often. And I do think that this is a great investment. It was only like, it had to be less than 300, I'm for sure. It was less than 300. But the upgraded version of this, I believe is like six. So I've been kind of like procrastinating on getting it, but I'm gonna get it because I love this thing so much. So the thing about the Slash is that you need rechargeable batteries because you will lose a charge super quick, especially if you have your camera on burst where it's just taking pictures constantly. And these are the batteries. These are by Energizer. And this is how I charge them in this little charger thingy. And I do need to get another set of batteries because when this dies, I don't have another set, so I have to wait. So I do need to get another set of these, but this is what I use to charge it. Okay, so now that you've seen what I use when I'm indoors versus what I use when I'm outdoors, you could probably tell that I prefer to take my pictures outdoors because indoors is a lot of Finessing, okay? But anyways, one thing that I did forget to mention when you are taking pictures by yourself, you definitely wanna have some sort of protection. And I'm, I'm just saying, okay? You guys know how people are in this world, okay? So you have to protect yourself. At the end of the day, if, they, if someone sees a young woman in the middle of, I don't know, an empty area by herself, taking photos of herself and she looks really cute. She has a really cute outfit. You guys know, people are just, which is another reason why I love the fact that when I do take my pictures outdoors, all I have is my phone and my tripod. So if I need to like grab my stuff real quick and like jet and get out of there, I can literally just grab it and just hop in the car and be out. So I have pepper spray and I have a pocket knife. I know some areas, certain things like pocket knives are illegal. I've heard that, so I don't know if you just wanna do your research and be safe, cause you don't wanna, you know, you don't wanna be doing nothing illegal, but definitely have some pepper spray and get the kind that is gel because it will not fly back on you. It's thick, so it will go straight to them and that's it. Like it will not blow back on you. So get a gel pepper spray and a pocket knife if you feel comfortable with these. Okay, so we're just gonna focus more on taking the pictures outdoors or on my own because I feel like the equipment side of things is just kind of a lot and I'm not expecting anyone to go out and buy $5,000 worth of camera equipment just to take photos. It's not that deep. So I'm gonna focus more on the outdoor photos. So basically with a tripod, you want to set it at a level that you like personally. Some people like their photos to be taken overhead. I could never. Some people like their photos to be taken lower so they look longer. And then there's some people who just like it right in the center so it looks as though someone is taking the photo for you. And that's me personally. I take a lot of outfit pics. So I like for the tripod to literally be at chest level at all times. So basically finding out where you want the tripod to be 
it's completely up to you. Before you leave to get to your location, I would recommend you playing with a tripod before you actually leave and then find what setting you want it to be on and either leave it there or remember exactly where you had it. I like to just leave my tripod in the length that I want it to be so that when I pull it out of the car, it's already elongated and I can just put my phone in and just get going. So something that I did learn recently within the last couple of months is from, I will put her name on the screen because I don't want to butcher it. I'm pretty sure it's like MJ or something like that. But I learned a trick from her because I do try to take my photos occasionally. And then of course I'll have my husband take photos when I don't have to. Honestly, if I don't have to take my own pictures, I don't. Like I just don't prefer it. But if I do, then there's just some things that you just want to know so that you can get through it quicker because you don't want to be out there longer than you have to. So basically you set up your camera exactly where you want it to be and then you just throw something. So if you're outdoors, maybe find like a rock. If you have something like extra with you, you can just place that on the ground. I usually go for like a rock or something and I throw it into the frame. In this case, I used a pin because I was indoors but I just basically threw it and then you want to see where it lands. You want to make sure it's in the frame and then you want to center that item as center as you can get it. And then you want to constantly keep checking, basically walking from the camera to the item, from the camera to the item to adjust it. So you want to keep moving it until it's centered and then until it's right at the base of the camera where you can't see it anymore and that is how you'll know how far you can go up without your feet getting cut off and if you're in the center so this is like the most genius thing ever okay for me it took forever like i would literally just set up my camera and then i would just like try different angles and move closer and move further back and it was always terrible like it always looked terrible i was too far or i was too close so this just helps you never go past that mark. So another way to make sure that you are centered, this is only more so for centering yourself. If you still want to make sure you don't go past the bottom of the camera, you still have to do that whole thing again, like put something down and adjust it. So if you do want your life to be a little bit easier as far as centering yourself goes, then, okay, pick a wall, right? So if you're in an area where the wall goes like, you know, into an angle, and there's a line in the middle and you want to be centered just set up your camera to where that line in the middle is directly in the center so you know if you're standing right there you're in the center regardless now as far as your feet go you might still have to put down something but as far as being in the center that's an easy way to center yourself in photos so just find something that has like something in the background that you can center yourself from and that's an easy way to do that okay so now that we are finally at the point of taking photos the only really main tip that i have is to keep moving so now that you have your camera set up exactly where you want it you have your marker so that you don't go past you know the bottom of camera and or you have yourself centered just keep posing okay after you press that button go back to your spot and just keep posing some of the best pictures of mine that I feel like were just pictures of me moving like it looks fluid it doesn't look forced when you actually pose that's when it looks a little weird you're a little bit more relaxed if you just keep moving as opposed to just going like this and then 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 going like this you're going to do that but typically the ones in between the movements are the ones that look the best for me personally so I'll just put up some examples of photos where I literally was just moving, fixing myself, maneuvering, and it just they just turned out fire. And also if you need to look up poses like on Pinterest, kind of in the beginning phase when you're looking for an outfit, you could also be looking for poses. For me, it completely depends on the outfit, so I don't look for pose inspo. I just kind of look in the mirror before I leave and see what looks good. So that's another tip that I forgot is to practice in the mirror before you leave and every outfit is different so if you want to do the same pose you may be able to get away with it but for me personally i feel like different outfits things you want to show off you definitely want to pose differently number one you don't want to be that person where you go on the instagram and you just see the same pose over and over again people hate that for some reason i've noticed i personally don't mind like do what you do but i've seen a lot of people always be like 
in people's comments, not mine, but in people's comments, and they're like, you always do the same pose. Why do you always do the same pose? Like, people just be tripping, okay? So, if you wanna do the same pose, sis, do the same pose. But for me, I feel like certain outfits require different poses that are a little bit more flattering to the outfit, your body, and so forth. So now we have our photos and we are ready to go. So of course, as you're taking these photos, you're constantly going back and forth to the camera to make sure that you are where you wanna be, number one, you actually like the photos because if you don't, you don't wanna keep taking pictures in that spot. Just move somewhere else and do everything all over again. Like you don't wanna stay in the same spot for like 30 minutes trying to take pictures and then you end up hating them all because you just didn't want to move like definitely check after you take your first set of pictures to make sure you even like it and if you do keep going if you don't keep it moving like just move on to the next because you don't want to waste your time you want to get this content out you want to get it done so you definitely want to make sure you actually like it so definitely check periodically as you're taking them to save yourself the heartache so now that you have seen that you like the photos you actually see a good three i always go with a good three y'all know i do the most in my carousel like i use up every freaking frame in the carousel but i do make sure that i like at least two or three pictures before i leave and that's how i know i have a decent amount in there waiting for me if i swipe and i'm like oh yeah that's cute oh yeah that's cute oh yep that's cute and then i'm just like i know there's more in there so i'm good to go so now you just want to pack up and you want to head back home okay so you can edit these pictures and because this video is already so long i am going to do a how i edit my instagram pictures either in a vlog or i'm going to do its own little video because i don't want this video to be hella long it's already pretty long i didn't expect to have so much information but but i definitely wanted to give you guys all the information all the tips all the tricks everything in this video so i hope you guys appreciate it and definitely give it a huge thumbs up if you're ready for the how i edit my instagram picture video because that is probably going to be a whole another 20 minutes and i really don't want this video to be an hour and i know y'all don't either so just stay tuned for that video but i hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely give it a huge thumbs up let me know if you learned anything if anything was helpful i do apologize if my voice has kind of changed my allergies are going nuts right now because of this plant and it's not even real it's just really dusty so i'm just dying over here but i hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a huge thumbs up and let me know if you guys want more behind the scenes type content just you know me doing my job essentially y'all want to see what i'll be doing so i just want to give you guys more content like this so yeah let me know down below if you guys learned anything y'all hear this do y'all hear this this is really messing me up. Like my voice has changed as I've sat here because of this plant. That's ridiculous. But I'm gonna get out of here because now I need to go drink some tea because I feel like stuffed, okay? Like, mm, y'all, I just gotta go. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hit this video with a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, okay? Cause that's what this whole video is about, right? Follow me over there so you guys can see my photos. Also, let me know if there's any photos that you guys were surprised that I took myself. And with that being said, I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.